Hello guys, how are you? I think so you would be fine and enjoying good health. Today I have selected a topic on nasal polyps. Nasal polyps are soft, painless, non-cancerous growths on the lining of your nasal passages or sinuses. They hang down like teardrops or grapes. They result from chronic inflammation and are associated with asthma, recurring infection, allergies, drug sensitivity or certain immune disorders. Small nasal polyps may not cause symptoms. Larger growths or groups of nasal polyps can block your nasal passages or lead to breathing problems, a lost sense of smell, and frequent infections. Nasal polyps can affect anyone, but they are more common in adults. Medications can often shrink or eliminate nasal polyps, but emergency surgery is sometimes needed to remove them. Even after successful treatment, nasal polyps can often return. As far as symptoms are concerned, nasal polyps are associated with irritation and swelling, inflammation of the lining of your nasal passages and sinuses that last uh, more than 12 weeks, which is chronic sinusitis. However, it is possible to have chronic sinusitis without nasal polyps. Nasal polyps themselves are soft and lack sensation, so if they are small, you may be not be aware you have them. Multiple growths or large polyps may block your nasal passages and sinuses. Some signs and symptoms of chronic sinusitis with nasal polyps include a runny nose, persistent stuffiness, post-nasal drip, decrease or absent sense of smell, loss of sense of taste, facial pain or headache, pain in your upper teeth, a sense of pressure over your forehead and face, and snoring and frequent nose bleeds. When to see a doctor? If your symptoms last more than 10 days, then you must seek a doctor. Symptoms of chronic sinusitis and nasal polyps are similar to those of many other conditions, including the common cold. So you must seek emergency uh, care if you have serious trouble in breathing and sudden worsening of your symptoms. If you have facing double vision, reduced vision or limited ability to move your eyes or if you have severe swelling around your eyes. Increasingly severe headache accompanied by high fever or inability to tip your head forward. So what are the causes? Scientists do not yet uh, fully understand what causes nasal polyps, why some people develop long-term inflammation or why irritation or swelling inflammation triggers polyps to form in some people and not in others. The swelling occurs in the fluid-producing lining mucous membrane of your nose and sinuses there is some evidence that people who develop olives have different immune system responses and different chemical markers in their mucous membrane that do those who do not develop polyps nasal polyps can form at any age but they are most common in young and middle-aged adults nasal polyps may form anywhere in your sinuses or nasal passages but they appear most often in an area where sinuses near your eyes, nose and cheekbones all drain through winding passages into your nose. And what are the risk factors? Any condition that triggers long-term irritation and swelling inflammation in your nasal passages or sinuses such as infection or allergies may increase your risk of developing nasal polyps. Conditions often associated with nasal polyps include asthma a disease that cause the airway to swell to swell, inflamed and narrow, aspirin sensitivity, allergic fungal sinusitis and allergy to the airborne fungi and cystic fibrosis, a genetic disorder that results in abnormally thick, sticky fluids in the body including thick mucus from nasal and sinus linings and the chill, straw syndromes, esodomphilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, a rare disease that causes the inflammation of the blood vessels and then Vitamin D deficiency which may occur when your body does not have enough vitamin D. Your family history may also play a role. There are some evidences that certain genetic variations associated with immune system function make you likely to develop nasal polyps. Complications of the nasal polyps are various but they may be block normal airflow and the fluid drainage and also because of the long term irritation and swelling inflammation underlying their development and potential complications might include obstructive sleeve apnea this is a potentially serious condition in which you stop breathing and start breathing frequently during sleep and then the asthma flare-ups chronic sinusitis can worsen asthma and then 
sinus infections might occur poly nasal polyps can make you more susceptible to sinus infections and that recur often and uh, what is the preventive measure you may help reduce your chances of developing nasal polyps or having nasal polyps recur after treatment with the following strategies one is to manage allergies and asthma follow your doctor treatment recommendation if your symptoms are not well controlled talk with your doctor about changing your treatment plan avoid nasal irritants such as possible avoid breathing airborne chances that are likely to contribute to contribute to swelling or irritation in your nose and sinuses such as allergens tobacco smoke chemical fumes and dust and the fine debris and the uh, good practice of hygiene wash your hands regularly and thoroughly this is uh, the one best way to protect against bacteria and viral infections that can cause inflammation of the nasal passages and sinuses then humidify your home using humidifier may help the moisten your breathing passages improve the blood and flow of the mucus from your sinuses and help prevent blockages and inflammation clean the humidifier daily to prevent bacteria from growing and then is using a nasal rinse use a salt water saline spray or nasal wash to rinse your nasal passages this may improve improve mucus flow and remove allergens and other irritants you can purchase over the counter saline sprays or nasal wash kits with devices such as net pots or uh, squeeze bottle to administer rinse and use waters that's distilled distilled previously boiled for 1 minute and cooled and filtered using a filter with an absolute pore size of 1 micron or a smaller to make up the irrigation solution rinse the irrigation device after each use with the distilled distilled previously boiled or filtered water and leave it open to air dry the diagnosis and the treatment nasal polyps diagnosis is based on your answers to questions about your symptoms a general physician exam physical exams and the examination of your nose polyps may be visible with the aid of a simple light and instrument other diagnostic tests include nasal endoscopy a narrow tube with a light and magnifying lens or tiny camera nasal endoscope and enables you doctor to perform a detailed examination inside your nose and sinuses then imaging studies imaging obtained with a computerized tomography ct scan can help your doctor pinpoint the size and location of the polyps in the deeper areas of your sinuses and evaluate the extent of the swelling and irritation inflammation These studies may help also your doctor to rule out other possible blockages in your nasal cavity such as structural abnormalities and, and another type of cancerous or non-cancerous growth. Then allergy tests your doctor may suggest the skin test to determine if allergies are contributing to chronic inflammation with a skin prick test. Tiny drops of allergen causing allergen allergens are pricked into the skin of your forearm or or the right upper back. Your doctor or nurse then observe your skin for signs of allergic reactions if a skin test cannot be performed your doctor may order a blood test that is skin for specific antibodies to various allergens such as IgA antibodies test for cystic fibrosis if you have a child diagnosed with a nasal polyp your doctor may suggest leading testing for cystic fibrosis and mm, an inherited condition affecting the glands and produce mucus and tears sweat live and digestive juices the standard diagnostic test for cystic fibrosis is non invasive sweat test which determines whether your child's perspiration is saltier than most people's sweat is and the blood test your doctor may test uh, blood for your levels of vitamin d which are associated with nasal polyps and the treatment is uh, for chronic sinusitis with or without polyps is a challenging condition to clear up complex completely and uh, you will work with your healthcare team to develop the appropriate long term treatment plan to manage your symptoms and to treat factors such as allergen that might be contributing to chronic uh, swelling or inflammation the treatment goal for nasal polyp is to reduce the size or eliminate them medications are used usually the first approach and surgery may sometimes be needed but if Uh, but it may not uh, provide a permanent solution because polyps tend to recur 
what are the medication as a polyp treatment usually start with drugs which can make even large polyp shrink or disappear drug treatment may include nasal corticosteroid your doctor is likely to prescribe a corticosteroid nasal spray to reduce swelling on irritation this treatment may shrink the polyps or eliminate them completely nasal corticosteroids include flutexone uh, flonase allergy relief fluent hfa exhans and budesonide rhinocort Momitazone, uh, Asmanex, HFA, Triamcinolone, Nezacort Allergy 24-hour, and Beclomethazone, B- um, Beconase, AQ, QR, Red Haler, Q, QNSL, and Cislisonide, uh, Zetonia, L, Vesco, Oral and injectable corticosteroids. If a nasal corticosteroid is not effective, your doctor may prescribe an oral corticosteroid such as prednisolone, either alone or in combination with a nasal spray. Because oral corticosteroids can cause serious side effects, you usually take them only for a limited period. Injectable corticosteroid may be used if nasal polyps are severe. Medications to treat the nasal polyps and chronic sinusitis. If you have nasal polyps and chronic sinusitis, your doctor may give you an injection of medication called the Dupilumab, Duxipent, Dupizent to treat your doctor uh, to treat your conditions and this medication may reduce the size of the nasal polyps and lessen congestion. Other medication your doctor may prescribe drugs to treat conditions that contribute to long term swelling in your sinuses or nasal passages. These uh, may include antihistamine to treat allergies and antibiotics to treat a chronic or recurring infection, aspirin desensitization under the care of an allergy specialist with experience of desensitization may benefit some people with nasal polyps and aspirin sensitivity. The treatment involves gradually de- increasing the amount of aspirin you take while under a doctor's care in a hospital or clinic to help body tolerate taking aspirin long term. And uh, the, what is the role of surgery? If drug treatment does not shrink or eliminate nasal polyps, you may need endoscopic surgery to remove polyps and to correct the problems in your sinuses that make them prone to inflammation and the development of polyps. In endoscopic surgery, the surgeon inserts a small tube with a lighted ima- a magnifying lens or tiny camera endoscope into your nostrils and guides it into your sinus cavities. He or she uses uh, tiny instruments to remove polyps and other substances that block the flow of fluids from your sinuses. Your surgeons may also enlarge the openings leading from your sinuses to your nasal passages. Endoscopic surgery is usually performed as an outpatient procedure. After surgery, you will likely use a corticosteroid nasal spray to help prevent the recurrence of the nasal polyps. Your doctor may also recommend the use of a salt water saline rinse to promote healing after surgery. And there is the potential future treatment. Researchers are trying the role of biologic drugs such as medication that uh, treat severe asthma in helping reduce nasal polyps and release symptoms. Biologics work by targeting specific cells or proteins to reduce irritation and swelling. Early research suggests that the drugs may become options for uh, people whose nasal polyps does not respond to corticosteroids or surgery. If you have signs and symptoms of nasal polyps, you are likely to start by seeing your primary care physician. However, your doctor may refer you to an ENT specialist or an allergy specialist for diagnostic test or treatment. Based appointments uh, can be brief and because uh, there is often a lot to discuss, it is a good idea to prepare ahead of time. Here are some suggestions to help you to get ready for your appointment and understand what to expect from your doctor. Uh, what you can do is to be aware of any uh, pre-appointment restrictions when you make your appointment. You must ask uh, need to fast uh, for blood work or uh, if you need to do anything else to prepare for diagnostic test. Write down all your symptoms even if you seem unrelated to your nose or sinuses. Your doctor will want you to in detail about uh, your symptoms and started and whether any thing seems to make them better or worse. Take along uh, along with you a family member or a friend if possible having someone uh, along uh, with you can help you to recall all the information provided during your appointment. Make a list of other medical conditions 
uh, if you are currently being treated for allergies, asthma or any other health conditions, make a list of all your medications including over the counter drugs and vitamin or supplement you are taking. Question to ask your doctor because uh, time with your doctor is limited. Writing down a list of questions will help you make the most of your appointment list questions for your question for your doctor from um, from most important to least important in in case time runs out if you think you have symptoms of nasal polyp you may want to ask some of the following question what is the likely cause of my problem with breathing and sense of smell and other problems related to my nose what kind of test do i need what is the best course of action in my case do i need to see a specialist ent specialist what will be the cost will my insurance will it cover what type of follow up examinations or care will i need and if i have nasal polyps can be effectively treat the underlying cause of inflammation what should i expect to happen over the long term will my new symptoms affect how i manage my other health conditions do i need to follow any restrictions is there a genetic alternative to the medicine you are prescribing are there any brochures or other printed material that i can take home with me and what website do you recommend for me in addition to the question that uh, you have prepared to ask your doctor do not hesitate to ask other questions during your appointment and then what to expect from your doctor your doctor is likely to ask you a number of questions being ready to respond may free up time to go over any point you want to spend more time on your doctor may ask when did you begin the experiencing uh, these symptoms when did you last have the cold or sinus infection how often do you have cold or sinus infections in a year and do you have allergies do you have uh do you know that you are allergic to some things some dust some allergens some pollens uh, do you have asthma how well you are able to manage it and do you have taken aspirin or any other over the counter drugs for pain relieving or do you have do you smoke cigarettes or you are exposed to a second hand tobacco smoke or a passive smoking in your house and if you are or in a work environment if you are in your work or hobbies are you exposed to chemical fumes or other airborne pollutants such as dust or debris from a leaf flower uh, leaf blower or uh, uh, poison ivy uh, have you ever had any sinus or nasal allergy or if you have the history of hay fever so these will be the question your doctor will be asking when you will get appointment from him so this was all about uh, nasal polyps and i have uh, given you a detailed brief of uh, nasal polyps so if you have liked this video then please uh, subscribe my channel and uh, share my video with other individuals as well thank you for listening this video and have a wonderful nice day